What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So this is the Xiaomi 11T, the regular one, not the Pro. And I lead with that only because I think there's been much more of a focus on the 11T Pro when, in my opinion, it probably makes a bit more sense to just get this one, the regular 11T, instead. I guess you could make an argument either way. The 11T Pro has some nice extras that differentiate it, like the ridiculously fast 120 watt charging, more comprehensive camera capabilities, the Snapdragon processor inside, if that's important to you. But on the other hand, the regular 11T gives you like 90 95% of everything else the Pro offers for a little less money. And that's more than enough for me to say that there's really no good reason to go Pro this year. The 11T is a great standalone device too, even if it didn't have its Pro big brother. It's a flagship caliper phone for the most part, in my opinion, without the four figure price tag. And there's not a thing that's missing. So I'm gonna talk about my experience with this phone over the last week or so. I'll fill you in on everything you need to know about it. And hopefully by the end, this will help you decide if Xiaomi's new 11T is the phone for you. To start off, physically, I do think the Xiaomi 11T is actually a pretty good looking phone. You get a big 6.67 inch display that's surrounded by very minimal bezels. It's about an 85% screen to body ratio, and I really wouldn't change a thing up front. It's a modern design with no issues. Around back, the 11T has a very glossy finish with an almost industrial sort of of silver colorway and subtle brushed metal pattern. It's been reported that the materials here are glass for the back and aluminum for the frame, but the whole phone feels lighter than I would expect with those materials. And the rear cover in particular sounds thin and hollow when I tap on it and feels more plasticky. Either way, it's totally fine. I don't really care what materials a phone is made from anymore. The important part is that you do get an IP53 water and splash resistance rating, at least, and in the hand, for as big as this phone is, the slim, curvy edges make it a little easier to manhandle and maneuver when you use it. Like I said already too, with it being so lightweight, you can sort of adjust your grip with ease as well. All in all, I think Xiaomi did a nice job with the fit and finish on this phone. Now there's two other physical elements on the 11T that really stood out to me. The first is the fingerprint sensor. It's a side mounted power button setup and it's the full easy to feel for button, not like a flat sensor or depressed divot like on some other phones. With it being raised and very obvious, that makes it easy to tap and feel for on the first try, and it wakes and unlocks very quickly too. I noticed that at times I barely put my thumb to the button, and it's already ready to go. The other physical thing this phone gets right is actually the speaker setup. Now obviously there's the usual speaker down below next to the USB-C port, but there's also a second speaker here too though not in the place you might expect. Rather than an earpiece speaker combo, Xiaomi threw a second speaker at the very top of the phone, almost like you'd find on a tablet, and this was a great move. Rather than cramming in a sort of mediocre secondary speaker and a tiny slit above the display, you get a full size, even, dual speaker setup, and the out loud listening experience here is really solid. <laughs> I think more phones should opt for this setup too. It just makes a ton of sense. And I didn't have any issues with like accidentally covering up one of the speakers either when I held the phone. It works well, it sounds great, and it's one of the better speaker setups I've come across on a smartphone. In regards to the big important stuff, I think one of the standout features of the 11T is its display. And like I often say, this phone does have the trifecta of features and specs that allow it to offer a fantastic viewing experience. To start off, the big 6.67 inch screen is an AMOLED panel. So it's gonna be bold, bright, and colorful with everything you watch. Now for me, I like to use the more saturated color profile as well. There's other color settings you can mess with, of course, but even the default setup looks great. And this is a phone that really delivers when it comes to offering a punchy, colorful display with deep blacks and tons of contrast. On top of that, it is a 2400 by 1080 resolution display, which I think is critical for this size. You get some 395 pixels per inch here, which isn't over the top, but 
it's enough to call this screen plenty sharp from a normal viewing distance. And nowadays, we don't really see many 1440p and above screens anyway. The final piece of the screen trifecta, of course, is a 120Hz high refresh rate. This allows for a silky smooth and ultra responsive feel that is not only visually very pleasing, but enhances the user experience with the phone as well. Like I mentioned, these are the three aspects to a display nowadays that I think allow for the perfect setup. And this phone has it all and then some. Most importantly, this is also the same display setup as the 11T Pro. And I don't necessarily want to make this a whole comparison video, but I think it's important to note that with the display and actually everything else I've mentioned so far, it is a one-to-one -one sort of comparison. We haven't yet missed anything on this phone that's offered on the 11 Pro. Now inside, this is the first sort of subtle indication that the 11T is the lesser device, but actually it may not be as impactful as you might think. This phone is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 1200 5G processor which is still a fairly new top of the line chipset on its own. And while the 11T Pro does get the Snapdragon 888 5G, I think some performance and overheating issues that have popped up might actually sway some people in the direction of this MediaTek processor instead. In fact, while the processor inside this phone is objectively not quite as powerful, we're probably talking about a difference that's almost negligible in most people's day-to-day -day use. And I should also mention that yes, the 11T Pro can be spec up higher to 12 gigs of RAM, this regular 11T maxes out at 8, but it's the same UFS 3.1 storage, and most importantly, like I mentioned, I don't think you're going to come across any real performance differences. From just a general OS perspective, you guys know I don't have a ton of experience with Xiaomi's MIUI, but I found it to be a very enjoyable Android skin at a minimum, and a really solid user experience as a whole, with plenty of decent add-ons and changes that make it fluid and allow for great performance. Not a huge fan of the default icon pack and some of the little intricacies and differences like swiping away notifications and navigating the drop down menu and app switcher took some getting used to since I'm so accustomed to Samsung, but I do think MIUI 12.5 is a great update all in all. For more intense stuff like games, I also found the phone to perform perfectly no matter what it is I was playing. And I think it's also important to mention that like I alluded to earlier, the MediaTek 1200 5G in side didn't experience any overheating issues or other performance blips for as long as I was playing these games, which at times was an hour or two or even more, so that's great to see. I know Xiaomi had to do something to differentiate this phone from the Pro, but at the end of the day, I'm not sure this difference in processor was truly enough. And that's, I think, both a slight at the 11T Pro and a compliment to this regular 11T. I can't imagine you're missing anything performance-wise or feel like you're at any disadvantage at all in going with this phone, and it is for all intents and purposes still a top of the line device when it comes to capabilities. So I think the sort of standout feature that everyone talked about with the 11T Pro was its ridiculously fast 120Hz charging capabilities, which is totally understandable. It's a heck of a thing, charging your phone up in 17 minutes, but this regular 11T has a crazy fast 67 watt charger, which can juice this thing up completely in a little over 30 minutes. Still plenty quick. And with the same 5000 milliamp battery inside both 11Ts this year, you probably won't even need to be connected to the charger much anyway. I found this device to last more more than a day on a single charge. It can push some 15 hours of screen on time for me, even with 120 hertz enabled. And I think if you wanted to even get more than that out of it, you could probably make this phone last two days if you aren't a super heavy user and bump that screen back down to 60 hertz. Overall, power and longevity are not an issue here, and I personally didn't feel like it was missing much not having the 11T Pro's over-the-top charging speeds. I think the last area where the 11T and 11T Pro wound up being pretty different from one another is with the cameras. And there's probably more of a discrepancy here than any other aspect of the phones. The hardware is actually the same. This big camera module houses a massive 108 megapixel main lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide shooter, and a 5 megapixel telephoto macro lens. The selfie camera is a respectable 16 megapixel shooter up front as well. And overall, there's nothing different here going from the 11T to the 11T 
Pro as far as the specs and hardware. Inside the camera app, Xiaomi offers a wide array of shooting modes and features that truly do make the most of all those lenses and megapixels. You can utilize the full 108 megapixel lens if you want. There's multi-camera support, various manual controls, and other more fun filters and add-ons. There isn't a single element here that I didn't find, and in practice, I do think this phone can take some pretty good shots. There's two things to consider here though. I don't really think this is a thousand dollar flagship camera setup, and what I mean by that is you can tell this phone struggles a little bit in low light sometimes, the wide angle produces a darker looking shot, and the image processing with some of the over the top colors and saturation can take away from the real world look, and wind up producing a shot that sometimes feels overdone. There's no glaring issues though, and like I said, I think this phone does pack in a really good camera overall, but I don't think it beats the likes of some other flagship phones. And there's also the handful of things the 11T Pro can do that this phone cannot. I've seen some reviews say that just your average everyday pictures do look better on the Pro for whatever reason. And you can do things like shoot 8K video on the Pro or even 4K 60 and super slow-mo and it has HDR10 plus support thrown in as well. It's obvious the Pro got even more attention when it comes to its camera capabilities. And that makes sense. Nowadays, Pro phones from these smartphone companies seem to almost always be all about the camera differences, but I think in general, the 11T still takes a nice shot. And I think it's certainly an above average smartphone shooter as it is. All in all, I think the Xiaomi 11T, the regular one, is a great phone by itself. I'd buy this for its screen and speaker setup to start. It's perfect for content consumption. It has plenty of powerful specs as well, and a decent camera setup too. It's not over the top with anything in particular, but it's the full package. And like I've said a few times already, I just didn't feel like I was missing out on anything by not opting for the Pro. It's the 11T for me, that's what I prefer this time around, but what do you guys think? Is there any real reason to jump to the 11T Pro this year? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.